Took my time to get to know you right. See the man behind the movie smile. Um, so on a Zoom with me, you will know her. We we all lo- know and love her. She has a brand new album out. We're going to talk about it. Louise Carver. Hello. <laughs> it's always such a treat to speak to you because you, you're you doing so many things and such exciting things. And you're also a dog person, which is like great. Ziggy is here. He says hi. Oh, yay. Where's Ziggy? Hello, Ziggy. Come here. I had a dog called Ziggy when I was growing up. Hello, my darling. Oh. Very dirty. Oh. Because he's been in the pool and then the mud, but yeah, he. Oh, but you got kisses. Yes, I did get kisses. (laughs) (laughs) Okay, so I haven't spoken to you since before the lockdown. Tell me, how was that for you? Were you working or drinking like the rest of us, baking banana bread? What were you doing? All of the above. (laughs) Why did we go to banana bread? I think it was easy, and we needed a win. (laughs) Yeah, (laughs) and I think just work. Bananas were readily available. There was n- not much else, you know. No one wanted bananas. You were fighting over toilet paper, but there were bananas everywhere. And yes, and if they went a little bit, you know, squidgy, it was fine. It's actually yeah. better. They said for the rest of me. <laughs> I'm not really a banana person, but banana bread I like. Um, yeah, I was making an, an album, um, so I used the time well. I think it was initially. I'm not going to say it was a walk in the park. You know, it was very strange okay. times for everybody. Yeah. Um, But I'm quite a tenacious soul. So I just thought how ironic it was that in January, that just January 2020, I was saying to my partner, um, I don't have a time. I don't even have time to be a writer anymore. I'm just on the eventing side and I'm performing and touring. And like, when am I going to just sit and write? And then, hello. (laughs) You see. I had time. Be careful what you wish for. I think that that that's a big thing. I know. It was me. It was my fault. (laughs) (laughs) I think collectively it was you and I, Louise. I think it was both of us. I think we needed a break. I had been moaning about needing a break for a really long time. No, but all jokes aside. So you were super busy and you have been forever. I did not realize, um, and I, I said this to someone else the other day, bands and artists need to stop celebrating 10, 15, 20 years in the industry because I feel like I'm not that old. I'm not old enough to have followed someone's career for 15 Odd years, you know what I'm saying? And I saw you started in this industry when you were 15 years old. Yes, yes, I know. It's, um, it's I've grown up in this industry uh, and it has changed. You know, I suppose that's what keeps it exciting, exciting. It has changed massively from when I started. It was all about keeping your private life private. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Those days are gone. Um, and um, yeah, it's now no CDs, obviously, everything on digital. It's been, it's, it's just been very, very interesting to be a part of this industry that's really changed. The change at the moment from live performances and PRing stuff in real life to this Zoom online thing, obviously it has merits and, and demerits. What are some of the, yeah. the plus sides of, of this new marketing strategy for you? Well, I mean... Uh, traveling, it saves a lot of time. I think uh, I've, I've got another business. I've got a uh, jewelry business I've had for um, 14 years now. So um, really during the COVID time, the other start, side was that my online business really grew. Um, so I worked hard on on making an album and growing the business and I had time for that. So um, I think as a, as a teenager in the business, I had a lot of time, although I was at university as well and school, but now I really need every second to kind of structure my day so that I'm not dropping. I always drop a ball. I'm a B plus. I always say I'm not an A student. <laughs> so it was a ball I missed. I'm like, ah, damn it. I've forgotten that. Um, so it keeps it real, I suppose. But I do need the time. So I like how we're doing this. I don't have to drive in as much as I love Jacaranda. I don't have to drive in. It saves on fuel. Um, I, I think you can get out. You can really get a lot done with this new way of doing interviews and um it's lovely to touch base with people but it saves a lot of time and hopefully the sentiment is there it carries throughout the interview whether i'm in studio with you or doing this no 100 percent, it does have you done any writing online like on zooms or teams whatsapp video call <laughs> skype that's interesting <laughs> no um i very rarely write in fact i don't write with it i write 
by myself. I need to, the, those, that little fairy dust that happens in your brain when you're writing has to, I have to be alone. I actually can't even have my uh, partner, Mark, in the a house with me. He has to go somewhere. And just that little kernel uh, of, um, to start the song, which, which happens, that I need to have nobody in the house. And then once it comes together, and I don't know how it comes together, but it comes together, then um, it's fine. I can start collaborating and things. But that little kernel has to be on my own. Um, and then I've worked with Sims, but we haven't worked in this way. So although, yes, actually, um, he would send me like my previous song, Take My Hand, which I mm -hmm. wrote with Sims uh, from the Muffins. He, I said, send me the sexiest groove you can think of. And we were in lockdown. <laughs> it was a struggle. But like, imagine we're on the beach in Mozambique drinking um, doishems and eating prawns and send me that groove and send me a groove. And then I wrote with the group, but no one's ever with me. It's a very private yeah. thing for me. Which is weird. I don't write collaboratively. You're it's a, it feels like such a very private uh, like like thing, but then you're also gifting it to the whole world. It's a very <laughs> private thing. <laughs> it's weird. And I think that's actually my personality, because um naturally I'm an introvert, and I think a lot of writers are, where I need that time to be alone and recharge. I get quite irritable if I've had like a brunch with girlfriends and then maybe off somewhere else for a braai later. I yeah. can't do that. I actually need to recharge um, and then I'm fine. And it's not that I don't like people. I just can't get myself, you know, a fully charged battery with people around, but yet I'm on stage and I enjoy both as aspects of that. So yeah, I don't know. It is a private, this next album I'm about to release, uh, Dark Secrets is extremely revealing. Um, and it's a very sensual album. It's not, I'm not just holding hands. <laughs> I've Ooh. taken his hand. <laughs> it's oh. moving on to many more levels. I... I think it's nice and liberating as a woman, actually, to yeah. talk about more sens. I'm not saying like, like how, not to stereotype men, but just like how men talk about more physical things in, in relationships. Um, women will talk about it more sens sensually. So it's a very sensual album and, you know, we're all over 21. And so, yeah, I, I think writing it was in lockdown and um, and I was just dying to have some sexy times. <laughs> <laughs> so it, come, it comes from a place of desire and fantasy, a lot of fantasy. And I haven't written from that place before because I haven't, I'm not going to say what I talk about. And there's definitely been thoughts about naughty things, but I haven't actually done them. So it was interesting to write from that place of like, ooh, what if I... I did something crazy like that. And then I just went there and it's very sexy. I mean, it's late night red wine music. Some I'm of the stuff. I'm ready. Okay, but is, this, <laughs> is this move scary for you? Because for me, and I don't know if this is, obviously we all have different perceptions of you, right? You're different for everyone. But for me, hmm. you've always been the the good, safe, Louise Carver, you know what I'm saying? And now you're like 50 <laughs> shades of Louise Carver a little bit. Is that scary? Yeah, the private life. I know inherently you're multifaceted. You're a human woman. I mean, there are many different parts to you. But I, this is a new side that we're seeing. Is that scary for mm. you to show us? No. I mean, I get scared about a lot of things. I'm not um, – I think we're just brave just generally as women. Um, and uh, <laughs> I think we, we're tough in being – uh, in show business as well, in entertainment like yourself, we're, we're tough just by definition because you have to be thick skinned. Mm. It's coming at you. Um, but uh, no, this particular thing, it just felt like the right pair of shoes to put on. I mean, I really felt very comfortable in my being being a woman. Yeah. Um, and I feel confident. I feel like I've gone with my fans and through so much and not just fans with people that maybe don't know me yet but I'm always going through the same things as other people my age and a little bit younger and a little bit older so I'm talking about what we're talking about I mean when you're in pajamas for two years looking at your partner <laughs> you may fantasize about other men or women you know 100%. it's gonna happen yeah it's yeah. just normal you need to go <laughs> go so I can miss you <laughs> It's, it's a lot <laughs> But you know what I think, um, it, like the universe has been leading me to a place of of very much more authenticity in, in everything that I do. And the resounding message is to embrace 
femininity, right? Dark and light, both sides of it. Because we both, yeah. we all have, we all have two. And I'm seeing a lot more men and women embracing that kind of sensual feminine side of themselves. And it's a beautiful thing to see. And I wonder if it's because we've, like you say, spent the last two years either completely isolated and alone or with the same person for two years mm. and no one else, you know? Yeah. Possibly. I think there's no secrets um, anymore. And I think we've also learned to value other people. Um, as an introvert, I just thought, okay, I need to go, I need to go. And and then when you are gone for two years, then you really think I'd love to be able to hug someone or um, just have a meeting face to face or meet a bunch of your girlfriends. And you value that. I think it's been a big awakening for everybody on what's important and not to sweat the small stuff. And also I think the resilience of us, because if you were to tell me like, we're gonna take away your performance income. Um, I even have a, um, an Airbnb apartment that I, um, I have on Airbnb, that's gonna stop as well. Um, your jewelry, I was in about five different shops around um, South Africa, that's gonna stop. The malls are gonna be closed. I mean, you couldn't imagine anything more terrifying. And um, yeah, we made it through. So yeah. we, we're, we're tougher than what we may think. It's incredible how resilient one is. And, and especially I think with you being in this industry and understanding that like at some points this industry will lull and you must have yes. other, other avenues, right? Yes. Never in a million years would you ever have thought that all of those avenues would be yeah. gone. And you would be, <laughs> but that's the thing, right? Everyone always says backup plan, backup plan. I mean, when I went to drama school, my parents were like, you have to have a backup plan because yeah, this might not too. work. My backup plan mm. also went when lockdown happened, you know, like mm. everything shut down. And I think it made us reevaluate what's important and not. But speaking of lockdown and recording, I wanted to chat a little bit about the process recording this album. Because you said yes. that you send everyone out the house, you sit down. Is there like a time frame that you like block off where you're, where, where you're thinking, okay, I've got to get five songs out or 10 songs out um, and you take 10 days or a week or a month? How does that work for you? Oh, it's um, very strange. Um, a little yeah. bit of wizard magic in there as well. I mean, it's, I don't really understand it. But, but I came into the process with about six songs already written, done. Um, I've got a basic understanding of production. So uh, working from Logic, which is a, a program. So I can put it together basically. Nothing that you'd ever have on radio. <laughs> Unless it was the acoustic version. <laughs> That's it. Um, and I was very fortunate to, um, I wrote this, the song, which is going to be the lead of the album. It is so different. You're going to, you're going to flip. It is something, um, whew, it's steamy, but it's sensual and it's going to take you, you want to be alone with this song. It is. <laughs> mm. um, so I wrote it and I shocked myself. I shocked myself. I thought, oh, what have I done? Um, I played it to my record label. And uh, the head of Gallo said to me, you need to speak to um, Craig from Audio Militia in Joburg. He's got big studios. I went there and we just hit it off and he wanted to work on the song. In fact, he played it. It was just uh, basic, my basic kind of production. And he had uh, four other guys. It's one of those moments. He had four other guys in the giant studio that they usually mix uh, soundtracks for big movies on. I played it to him quietly and he said, guys, listen to this. And he, and I was like, oh, um, I was still, I said, still in the very early stages. I was just having a meeting with you. And he said, no, 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 guys. And they put it on. They said, listen, we want to do your whole album. So that was, that was an amazing thing. That was just before COVID hit. Wow. And then in Audio Militia, they have about five young producers coming from like some Piwes in there, Sims from the Muffins. He works for Audio Militia. He's coming from a kind of Afro, poppy, gospel -y, for the muffins, you know. Um, and then you've got Garrick, um, who's done my latest single, uh, Nothing Feels Good Without You. Yes. He uh, comes from a kind of dance pop background and he's got <laughs> this crazy energy. And so I mixed up with all those guys and I said, oh, I've got this, who wants to work on this track? Oh, I'm taking this track, you know. So then they take it and send it back to me. But then they were about, I was short of about, three or no, about four songs, which I hadn't even started. And I said, this is good, guys. Send me a groove. Send me a groove. And I, I'm really good. If you send me a groove, I'll write something over it. And in that case, I needed wine and I needed, it was winter when I did this, a fireplace. And I needed Mark to go and game or something and just be away with the dogs. And I said, I need, I need two solid hours. Just sit, listen to that groove and then write. And it was an interesting process to do. I do that in the in my dance world overseas. Um, 
with the, the producer I work with for a very different genre of music club, that kind of crazy, crazy stuff. Uh, and they will send me a groove and say, can you write something? And then that's how I write. So I know how to do it. It's just usually with the albums that I release in South Africa, it's very much, I'm on the piano, how you know me, you know? Yeah. And so for this, I said, no, liberate me, send me something sexy and weird and I'll yeah. write over it. And, and so I did. So about four of those songs weren't in existence before we started doing the album. So it's a different way of doing it. Um, yeah, Nothing Feels Good Without You was 50% written already by me. I did the um, the chorus, I'd already done. Okay. And I just said, I'm stuck with a verse. I don't actually know what to do. And then Garrick said, what about this? And I was like, okay, everybody out. <laughs> ben, let's go, let's <laughs> Everyone go. Everyone leave me, go go. Go take the dogs for a walk. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> just go. I love, so, yeah. I love that that you're so open about your creative process because I think that it's really necessary for everyone, to, whatever they're creative in, whether that's piano or art or writing songs or writing poetry or just journaling, I think there has to be a space for it, right? And it should be like an event almost, like you say, everyone leave, dogs leave, glass of wine, mm. fireplace, like create an, like a, mm. like a, what's the word? Ritual around that. Yes. Because it kind of then fires your brain into going, okay, now we're creative the world is gone and and that also allows you to tap into that authenticity i think that you wouldn't get if you were quickly jotting down stuff at the dining room table amongst the day yes it is very much a ritual you're right and you've got all your creature comforts you're warm you've got a bit of wine to loosen up the the brain not too much otherwise it's <laughs> going to be terrible the next morning like it wasn't a masterpiece <laughs> <laughs> it was not good um just a little bit uh, especially if it's a, if it's um, you're writing about making love or whatever you're writing about, you've got to kind of get the day off you, you know. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I'm, I'm lucky. I have a very respectful person and uh, not respectful dogs, but it's okay. <laughs> we can manage them. <laughs> they are a handful, but uh, yeah, I forgot to train them, so that's it's on me. <laughs> oh no, but, yeah, it's, it's, it's fine. They're your children. It doesn't matter what people think. <laughs> Mine, jump, mine use windows as doors. It really doesn't matter at this point. We also should have been better, but they're babies. Um, Louise, are you touring this album? Are you going to be around Joburg, Cape Town, Durban? Where are you going? Yes. Um, so I, I decided about two years ago, or three years, I don't know, COVID doesn't it happen those two years, but I decided I actually don't want to tour in winter. Um, I don't want to put my fans in that, or, or people, I hate saying fans, it's such a funny thing. It's like, I don't want to put people that enjoy my music in an environment where it's cold and uncomfortable because I hate the cold. Mm. So I decided that I would tour twice a year, just have a bit of structure in my life now that uh, I have other things that I'm doing. So um, so I tour March and April. I, I did it this year. I went all over the country with Sims and that was a real <laughs> adventure. Um, we learned a lot about each other in <laughs> confined spaces for a very long time. I know everything about that man, more than I should. Uh, and vice versa. Um, and we're going to do it again in late. Well, we're starting on Heritage Day, the 24th of September, um, and we'll be doing um, I'm not sure exactly all the dates that have been set up for me, but starting at the O Pastori in uh, Northwest Province, which is lovely. Uh, and then uh, I've got my favorite Cradle Moon uh, and, and, um, and we'll be in Pretoria. And, and then a lovely one at, at Snatch 32 in Park Town North. So there's some nice scouting in Pumalanga and um, Northwest Province. And then we'll go and do the PE Plet George thing as well. Just to, to remind people about the single and, and just be out there again. Yeah, I'm excited to be out there again. I'm excited to see you perform <laughs> live. Uh, Louise, where can we go if we want to check out dates and venues? Yes. Um, I, I'm pretty good with that uh, I, as you're saying that I'm like oh I must update my web page um, which I don't do but I'm just send that <laughs> list where's my little notes um it's louisecarver.com and then on my home page you'll see where I am and and all that I need I need to do that so yeah I'll I'll do that <laughs> later today another thing but yeah I'll be all around and um just as soon as the sun comes out I'll be out we are so ready. And we're so ready for <laughs> Sexy Summer Nights with Louise Carver. I can't yes. tell you how ready I am. Um, thank you so much for your time. I can't wait to play more off, off of this album. Jacaranda FM.